the Reformation in England. So, how does the Reformation in England differ from that on the continent, and why? The Reformation in England begins because of political issues. It does not begin because Henry VIII disagrees with the theology of the Catholic Church. So there's many similarities between the English Reformation and the Reformation on the continent. In both cases, political authorities are crucial for the survival of the Reformed Church. In both cases, we eventually see a Protestant church that emerges that is very different from the Catholic practice and Catholic theology. But the difference is that in England, the political issue comes first. Henry VIII wants an annulment from his wife, Catherine of Aragon. Catherine of Aragon is the aunt of the Holy Roman Emperor, Charles V. Charles V, as Holy Roman Emperor, is the supporter of the Catholic Church, and, so, and therefore is protecting the Catholic Church and will be the main response to the Protestants in northern Germany. And so therefore, when the Henry VIII calls upon the Pope to issue an annulment, the Pope doesn't want to offend Charles V, whose aunt is Catherine of Aragon, and therefore the Pope denies the annulment. And therefore, Henry VIII wants out. Uh, and he's got many uh, people that agree with him, right? Thomas Cranmer, Cr Cranmer is his archbishop, and he says, look, I can grant you the annulment. Don't even worry about the Pope. Let's just change it. So I grant the annulment. So Henry goes, Henry VIII goes to Parliament, and Parliament passes the Act of Supremacy. And the Act of Supremacy says, the king is now the head of the Church of England. So the Act of Supremacy passed by Parliament says the king is the head of the Church of England, and this is the beginning of the Anglican Church, or the Church of England. Now initially, this Church of England continues the same Catholic practices. We don't see the change towards Lutheran beliefs, sort of the change in the number of sacraments, the change in the Mass, the change in all these things. We don't see that under Henry VIII. Henry VIII gets remarried to Anne Boleyn, she has a daughter. Her daughter is Elizabeth. Catherine of Aragon, if you remember, had had a daughter. Her daughter was Mary. And then, you know, Anne Boleyn doesn't deliver her son, so she's killed. And then there's a third wife, Jane Seymour. And Jane Seymour is, uh, finally delivers a son, Edward, who's a sickly young lad. When Henry VIII dies, finally after three more wives. When Henry VIII dies, and Edward will take over. And Edward will be uh, convinced by many of his advisors to change the church, to be more Protestant. And so under Edward, the church becomes more Protestant in practice. So the Church of England will change the number of sacraments. We'll have, uh, you know, we'll have a book of common prayer that replaces the Catholic uh, Vulgate and the Catholic sort of uh, mass uh, instructions. Uh, they'll have mass or church services in English and things like that. So... When Edward dies, because he's sickly, Mary is next in line. But Mary was the daughter of Catherine of Aragon. Therefore, Catherine of Aragon was before the whole act of supremacy. Catherine of Aragon was Catholic. Mary is Catholic. Now Mary's in charge, so she's going to re-Catholicize England. Now many Protestants aren't going to like this, so she's going to execute them. She gets the nickname Bloody Mary. But as we noted before in class, you know, this is sort of a, a, a bit of a sexist nickname because, you know, Henry VIII killed religious opponents too, and he's not called Bloody Henry. Uh, in fact, he's usually, you know, congratulated for having six wives. <laughs> but remember, Elizabeth Taylor had more. Okay? So anyway, um, so Mary tries to re-Catholicize uh, that, and she also marries... Philip II, the Spanish Catholic king. Well, Mary was the daughter of Mary, uh, Catherine of Aragon, so she's a bit older, so she dies, and now Elizabeth is next in charge. Now, Elizabeth was the daughter of Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn was part of the Reformed Church after the Act of Supremacy, uh, Act of Supremacy so she's an Anglican, 
So Elizabeth is an Anglican, she's more Protestant, so she transitions the church to be more Protestant again. Elizabeth will issue the 39 articles. The 39 articles will be broad statements of faith for the Anglican church. They're broad or general because she doesn't want to offend people. And so she doesn't fully explain every theological detail that, for example, the Calvinists explain or the Catholics explain because she doesn't want to cause division. So she's got these broad 39 articles of faith. They do make the church Protestant. Fewer sacraments, English services, uh, English prayers that are different than the Catholic ones. But for example, not completely, the English still have saints, which most other Protestant denominations had ended. Elizabeth, therefore, brings about what's called the Elizabethan settlement. In other words, there is a settlement on the religious front between Catholic versus Protestant. She makes it Protestant. And so this sort of ends those disputes. Interestingly, though, now we'll see after Elizabeth, the division will, between, will be between the more conservative Protestants and those Calvinist Protestants the Puritans in England, the Presbyterians in Scotland, who will reject the hierarchy and the more traditional aspects of the Anglican Church and will want to reform all of the Church of England to be Calvinist. And so this will set off the English Civil War in the mid-17th century and the whole Cromwell, Commonwealth, all of that stuff that we'll cover later. Okay. Thank God. <laughs>